Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you for our midweek service. We want to get into God what? See some amazing things that the Lord has in store for us today. And so let's take a minute and talk to the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the awesome gift of your word. Thank you for your presence with us in this service. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for everyone listening in this night. Their lives can never be the same. I thank you, Lord, for tonight. The ears of our spirit are open. The eyes of our spirit are open to behold realities and truths from your word. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the wisdom that comes from your word we are interacting with is in these few minutes. I thank you for the grace that is resident in the word is now coming alive in us. Thank you for the spirit of revelation, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding present and in operation in this service. I thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the best teacher. Reveal your word to us in simplicity yet in depth we give you praise in jesus blessed name we pray amen 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 well today i want to talk to us on the gift of eternal life the gift of eternal life now last week wednesday we began talking about how that you're born of god and we did mention that the fact that you are born of God, it means that his life came with that seed of God. So it's only good for me to continue from there. Just that we have a subtopic today. We are calling it a subtitle, The Gift of Eternal Life. Now, let me begin by saying that eternal life is the power and the nature of God. Eternal life is the power and the nature of God. It's not just the life of God, it's also the power of God. Because there's something about this eternal life. There's something about it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me point out something just to bring you up to speed on this one. Look at First John 3 verse 9. First John 3 verse 9. We read this last time, but it bears repeating. So I can show you why I'm saying eternal life is the power of God as well. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed, God's seed, remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now look at it in the CEV. Look at what CEV says in verse 9. God's children cannot keep on being sinful. His life-giving power. The part that he says his life-giving power is talking about seed. The seed carries this power with it. The power the scriptures are calling the life-giving power is in the seed. Okay? That's where the power is. So the Bible told us in the book of Second Peter 1, he said your life, the source of your life is the word of God. In fact, let's see that. Second Peter 1, the verse 24 there. Verse 24, use the New Living Translation. Verse 24. Okay. It says, All flesh is as grass. Uh, this is First Peter. Thank you. All flesh is as grass. All the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass with the earth and its flowers falls away. Use NLT. And then let's go to verse 20. Post verse 23. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. 
your new life will last forever because look at where that life comes because it comes from the eternal the living word of god you see that's the source of our life is god's word and that's how come that jesus said man shall live by every word you live by what gave birth to you what gives birth to you is what sustains you the word gave birth to us the word sustains us so he says that word your life he says it comes from the living word of god so you have seen that eternal life is not just the nature of god it's also the power of god let, let me use hebrews 7 and verse 15 to explain that to you hebrews 7 this is verse 15 And it is yet far more evident, even the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest, verse 16, who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. Can you see that life has power? Mm -hmm. So he says, according to the power of an endless life. This is the power which protects you from sickness. This is a power that makes it impossible to be sick with that life. Okay? It's working. That power works. It's the resurrection power. Okay? So according to the power of an endless life, use the living Bible, TLB, and see what TLB says for this one. He did not become, this is Jesus, a priest by meeting the old requirement of belonging to the tribe of Levi, but on the basis of power flowing from a life that cannot end. You see? Now you see this one connects even the power of God to the life that God has given us. In, in other words, ha, ha, if, if you have eternal life, you are a God. And God, as we know him, he has power. Okay? So it goes without saying that those that carry his nature also should walk in his power. That's how come it is it is not right. It's impossible to believe in God and not believe in miracles. You are contradicting yourself. If you believe in him, automatically you believe in miracles. It's who he is. So he says, power flowing. The basis of that power flows from a life that cannot end. Now use the passion, lastly, so you can see again. This king priest, this is Jesus, did not arise because of a genealogical right under the law to be a priest but by the power of an indestructible resurrection life you see so it shows us there is power the life i'm talking about is a life that has in it endlessness okay and this one also points out it's indestructible peter told us it's incorruptible you can corrupt that life you can add that life once it begins there's nothing you can do about it Glory to God. Now you see, the eternal life is a power. It's also the nature of God. Now look at this. John 10 and verse 10. So you begin to see why this teaching is important. Eternal life is all the reason why Jesus came. And notice we are calling it gift, which means you don't labor for it. It's a gift Jesus gives you by your faith in him. Now John 10, 10, he said the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. There is a version that states it so clearly. This is the Living Bible again. So Jesus will talk to us in that line. The thief's purpose, see, the, the thief has a purpose. The devil has a goal in each one's life. The thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and to destroy my purpose i like that my purpose as jesus is to give life in all its fullness hallelujah not just life in all its fullness there's another version that says in all its richness okay in all its richness okay okay nlt said my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life okay that's why he came that's the whole reason why he came, to give us life. Alright? 
to give us life. So when a man says, I believe in Jesus Christ, what they should note is that once you believed in him, he gives you something that we are calling eternal life. And it's a gift. It's a gift. Uh, now, the Amplified Bible added another word I want to lift from here. The thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I came that they may have, that's possess. Then he said that they might enjoy. You see? That's another one that we must lift from there. Because most of God's children have life. But not all of them are enjoying it. <laughs> yes, not all of them are enjoying it. It's just like you can be carrying something in your bag, some wonderful drink or bread or something, but you're not eating it. Even though you have it, you are not enjoying it. All right? So it's important for you to see that he came to give that life, not just to have and sit down on it, but to enjoy that life. He gave you the gift so you can unravel the gift, unwrap it, and begin to know to enjoy the things packaged in it. So he, he came that we might have life and enjoy it. And he said, have that life in abundance to the full till that life overflows. Glory to God. See, the life of God is always overflowing from our spirit all the way to our body. Okay? That's how it's supposed to be. So he came to give us life for us to enjoy. Now, Romans 6, Romans 6, verse 23. Because this time around, I want to, to strengthen the point that eternal life is the gift of God. It's the gift. You don't work for it. For the wages of sin is death. You see, when you have sin, it brings in labor. It brings in toiling. Okay? So he says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That life is not found anywhere else. If you are not in Jesus, you don't have that life. Now, look at the Amplified Bible. We are going to use both of them. Let's start with the first one. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift, I like that word, the free gift. It's not just a gift, it's free. The free gift of God, that is his remarkable, his overwhelming gift of grace. Eternal life is what grace offers. Eternal life is a gift of grace. You don't work for it. Overwhelming gift of grace to believers is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You see, Bible says something. He said that this gift of eternal life should overwhelm you. It's an overwhelming gift. Okay, it's a gift once it comes in you, it overwhelms anything that is not of God, overtakes it, so to say. Look at the other amplified Bible, the classic edition. For the wages which sin pays is death, sin will pay, but the bountiful again showing abundance increase. The bountiful free gift of God is eternal life. Okay. Eternal life is a bountiful gift that God offers us. Okay? Now, John 3, common scripture. Let's start from verse 15. Hallelujah. So, you can see already that eternal life is the gift of God. Let's start from verse 14. So, we, we read it in context. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted. Now, you, you see where he's quoting from. This day when the children of Israel went through desert, serpents, anytime you have serpents, they are representative of devils. So serpents began to bite them. Okay? Began to bite them. And where will serpent bite them? On their heels. Okay? That's where the serpent were biting them. And, and, and God crushed them by lifting a bronze serpent. Now, you know what is a bronze serpent? Anytime you have bronze in scriptures, it represents curse. Hmm? It represents curse. Anytime you see bronze, it represents curse. So now, 
Paul is going to tell you in Galatians, he will tell you Christ became curse for you. Being hung on a tree. It's exactly the same image. So when, when God said to Moses, those what you do for, for their healing, lift the bros up. In other words, uh, put a symbol, something to represent that curse. And he said, all you have to do to be delivered from this, look at the lifted shepherd. Okay? Because those that look at the sun don't see shadows. Huh? If you keep your eyes on the word of God, you won't see the waves, they won't sink you. Now he said, as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, because you see again in the wilderness, there was the church in the wilderness. And how that church enjoyed the health is by looking at the lifted serpent. Okay? Now, how to get healing is to go through the message of the cross. You must have an understanding of what Jesus did. You must see that your sin is hung on the cross. Your sickness is hung on the cross. That's how you get healing. Alright? So, we preach Christ and him crucified. Get that scripture, Collins. It's in the book of 2 Corinthians, I think. He said, I wanted nothing in your means except Jesus Christ crucified. 1 Corinthians 2, check there. Except Christ crucified and him only. Uh For I determined to not to know anything among you except Jesus and him crucified. Now, look at the NLT. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. What does the Living Bible say? For I decided that I would speak only of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. That's wonderful. So he said, I brought only one message, Jesus Christ and his death. This message on his death on the cross, we did it on the Holy Communion service. That message, you are just doing exactly what John 3 says. Jesus is lifted. And every time a sick person by scriptures is able to see Jesus lifted, by revelation, the sickness lives. If you can see the lifted Jesus, if you can see that the old man was crucified on the cross, this one wouldn't experience sickness. That's just as simple as that. So John chapter 3 again, we were at verse 15. Oh, glory. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Okay? Now verse 16 said something. For God so loved the world that he gave his begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish. Now today I'm dwelling on this last line. But have everlasting life. Now I need to say something about this one because every time God's children read this word everlasting life, what comes to their mind is life without an head. Okay? Uh, That's not the whole truth. Life without an head is a consequence of having eternal life. It's a consequence. Eternal life, like we defined it, is nature. Okay? It's the reason why God is the ancient of days. Okay? It's the reason why. Something else with eternal life is... uh, (laughs) Eternal life does not just carry endlessness, it also carries agelessness. Okay? Okay? That means that that means in the spirits there is there is a oh okay okay let me say it this way it, when, when you hit okay okay Ephesians four Ephesians four I didn't show that to you Ephesians four I want to read for you verse. 11. Listen to what this version of the Bible says. This is the Amplified Bible. 
Now, this is what he says in Ephesians 4. He says, And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed. I'm using the Amplified Bible. He gave men to us, some to be apostles, special messengers, some prophets, inspired preachers, okay, evangelists, and all those. Look at verse 12. His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints to do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body. Verse 13. That the body might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith, in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness, this is the line I want to pick, the completeness of personality which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the completeness found in him. Now, okay, you will see in a minute why I had to read that line for you. Because I want to show you, I want to show you agelessness. Until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing spiritually to become a mature believer, reaching to the full measure of the fullness of Christ, manifesting his spiritual completeness, exercising our spiritual gifts. Now, mm -hmm. you see, Jesus Christ has set a standard of maturity. Now, once you get there, they just want standard. That's why in the spirit, anyone you see in the spirit, you see young lives. That's all you see. You, you look at David today, he's a young man. You look at Abraham, a young man. Okay? So there's, there's, there's agelessness in eternal life. There is agelessness, there is endlessness that goes with it. Now, that's one. Look at John 14, 6. John 14. Look at verse 6. Jesus saying something here. This is a King James Bible. And Jesus says unto him, I am the truth, I am the way, I am the life. Okay? Now, see, we are learning on the gift of eternal life. Now, I just moved it a note higher. That uh, eternal life is someone. Okay? He's a person. That's why we said eternal life is to know him. Eternal life is to experience him. Okay? Now he said something here. Jesus said himself, he said, I am the way. Alright? I am the truth. I am the life. Now that's, that's, that, that's something else because I want to bring to you something eh, that Jesus is a life giver but he is also the life. So when Jesus gives you life, he gives you himself. Do you understand that? Yes. So when you say, I have received life you are saying you have received Jesus. Okay? That's what you're talking about. And that's where it comes with his nature. Okay? Now he says, I am the life. Jesus is the embodiment of life. Okay? Jesus is life in the flesh. Okay? That's who Jesus is. So once you receive his life, Jesus has come into your heart. Okay? So that's life. Now he said, Jesus is the life. He is also the life giver. Glory to God. Amen. Now, look at this scripture. Uh, John 5. I'm reading for you verse 24. John 5 verse 24. This is a King James Bible. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that heareth my word and believes on him that sent me has life. That that's just settles it. Number one, I have I have I have destroyed 
the understanding that eternal life only refers to living forever. It's about the nature. And I said, living forever is a result of that nature. Number two, the next thing I want to show you is that this eternal life is not what you get after you die physically. No, eternal life is a present possession for the believer. Okay? It's a present possession. So, in other words, once I receive Jesus Christ, okay, once I receive Jesus Christ, I have already entered into the realm of life. Okay? Now, look at this. He said, Verily, verily, I say to you, verse 24, I say to you, He that heareth my word, believes on him that sent me, has life, not will have. And these are the words of Jesus. He says, He has life. Look at the Amplified Bible for that one. He says, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, the person who hears my word, the one who heeds my message and believes in me has, the Amplifier says, now possesses eternal life. Now. Now he possesses it. That is, eternal life actually begins. Okay? Now he says, eternal life begins. Immediately a man says, I believe God raised Jesus. He is my Lord and Savior. Once you confess that, you are born again with that life. That life is impacted in your spirit. And he says, actually, eternal life begins. Amen. Begins that very moment. Okay? Actually, eternal life begins. The believer is transformed. Glory to God. See, I'm using the Amplified, the 2015 edition. So it's a believer is trans because the, the eternal life is carries with it transformation power. Okay? Transformation power. Such that you can believe God because of that eternal life, it turns a sinner to a child of God. That's what eternal life will do. It will transform a sinner into a child of God. Change a sinner into a saint. Hmm? So when we say you're not walking in purity, you're not walking in holiness, that is an expression of the nature. I hope you understand. So walking in holiness is a fruit of the holiness that is in me. Living right is a fruit of the nature, of the rightness that is in my spirit. Do you understand this? It's in me already, so I produce it as a fruit. So, Bible said over in Isaiah 61, he said, you will be called trees of righteousness. Yeah. And trees of righteousness, because it's a tree, it has fruit. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, problem is, we are dealing with a fruit, and there's a problem with the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, Jesus said over in Matthew 12, he said, a bad tree will give birth to wrong fruits. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it's about the seed, it's about the tree itself. So God calls you a tree of righteousness so he can demand fruits of righteousness. Are you understand what I'm saying? So he says you are a tree of righteousness so he can call for the fruits of righteousness from you. And those fruits are by fellowship with Jesus Christ. Okay? So you see, again I want you to see something else. Alright. Mm -hmm. John 5, this is verse 24. Let's use the New King James. Okay? Most as solemnly, assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word, believes in me, has everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed. This is past tense. The man has passed from death to yeah. You know, I can say I have passed from death. I'm now into life. Okay? I'm no longer in the realm of death. I'm now in the realm of life. I'll show you more of this. I'll keep building on this one. But there's a line I wanted you to see there. It's in John 17 verse 2. It's important for you to see it. John 17 2. Okay? He said... As, okay, let me start from verse 1. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, 
that he should give eternal life to as many. That's the line I want to show you. That eternal life is offered for everyone. Anyone that comes to Jesus, the package is available. The gift is available. Alright? And it's also important for you to see that Jesus has the power and the authority to do it. Okay? To give life. He doesn't have to go to the Father. Do I do this? He's the life. Okay? So he can offer life to anyone. As many as come to him. He's able to do, to do that. Give them eternal life. Okay? So he's able to do that. Now, listen to this line. I already said that. That eternal life is not the life that you get after dying. We have seen. Put it up for them now so that you can see. John uh, 5 verse 24. Use the Amplified Bible. So they will see that eternal life actually begins. Do you see it here? It says, if you believe on him that sent you, you have eternal life. It says, you now possess it. Then he says, eternal life, that is eternal life actually begins. Do you see? It begins the day the man gets born again. So I have said that eternal life is not something you get later. Okay? Look at John 6.47 again. I can strengthen this again with that scripture. John 6.47. Stick with the Amplified Bible. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, he who believes in me, okay, and has faith in me already, has eternal life. Look at that last night. He says, that is, he now possesses it. Okay? See, exactly the same thing. He says, you now possess it. So eternal life is a present possession. Granted me in Christ Jesus. I have it now. And we saw in beginning from John 10.10 10, that Amplified told us, you should not just have. You should do what else? Enjoy. Okay? You have it to enjoy it. Okay? It's like someone who is carrying something you can have for a meal and eat, and yet you are not enjoying it. Okay? So he gave you it so you can enjoy that life. That's why he gave us eternal life. Okay? Now, look at this. First John 5, verse 13. First John 5, 13. I want to also bring in another thought to you. Look at the whole reason why Apostle John wrote this book. Because chapter 5 is the last chapter of this letter. Alright? And he says, these things I have written to you who believe. He says, I'm writing to believers. Just like today I'm talking to believers. I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know. Alright? He says, I write to you believers which means just that you've been a believer, it, John says, now I want to awaken an awareness in you. I want to update your softwares. You understand? I want to bring you to a present reality. Okay? It's like someone that has always been a lion but running around with dogs. So you call him aside and say, hey, you don't belong to that family. Okay? You are just awakening them to something. So you understand why when Peter showed up in that house, was it, what, what was the name of that guy that was lying on the floor? Uh, uh, Aeneas. Okay? It was Aeneas on the floor. And Peter met him on the floor. And Peter looked at the guy. He said, Aeneas, Jesus Christ makes you well. No prayer. He just, because he was a disciple. And he was still on the floor. Peter just updated him. He said, hey my guy, what you receive from Jesus is not just forgiveness of sins. It came with healing. He said, just take advantage of it. And Aeneas, one that came to him, he rose up. You see? Aeneas, Jesus Christ, makes you whole or well. That, That means when you receive Jesus, every area of your life should show wholeness. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay? So he says, I write to you that believe, so that you may know you have, you possess. Okay? I have eternal life. You see, this no here is a Greek idol. It means awareness. It means to become aware. 
All right? So he says that you might know you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Use the Amplified for them so they can see that. I write this to you who believe the name of the Son of God in the peculiar services and blessings conferred by him on men. <laughs> Jesus has services. He offers. Are you understanding me? And part of this, this package that Jesus offers us, part of it is eternal life. Okay? It's like boarding a plane and you don't know that food is out there. It's free. It came with a ticket. It was all paid for. Jesus paid for a full meal. Don't just take the ride and not enjoy the meal. Okay? So as you enjoy this ride in Christ Jesus, all these things are available for you to enjoy as well. So he says, there are peculiar services and blessings offered in this Jesus Christ. And he says, so that you may know with settled and absolute knowledge. He says that you already, you must know already that you have eternal life. And he said, yes, eternal life. With settled knowledge. Absolute knowledge. You use the Passion Bible so they will see what the Passion said there. Glory to God. I have written this letter to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you will be assured and know without a doubt that you have eternal life. See, I know without a doubt that eternal life is in my spirit. Eternal life is in my body. I know without a doubt. Use the message Bible. I want to stress this point until you see it. My purpose in writing this is simply this. That you who believe in God's son will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life. The reality and not the illusion. Glory to God. He said I want you to know beyond any doubt that eternal life is not a fantasy. It's not an illusion. It's not a mirage. It's a present reality. Glory to God. It's ours to enjoy. It's ours to experience. So he says that you might know behold any shadow of doubt that you have it. Eternal life. You have the life of God. Hmm? I want you to know beyond any doubt that you have the life of God. You know something about that life of God? <laughs> I would have easily called it the God kind of life. And that would mean when you have this life, you are God. Hmm? You are God. In fact, let me show this. For you. I, I read last week. Eh? Look at Second Peter 1. You will see it in a minute. Verse 3. Use the Amplified Bible. Maricobra Hasovilas. This, this is just amazing. Look at this. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything. Glory to God. Woo! I love this one. Absolutely everything. These are the scriptures I read and, can, and I cannot be asking for anything. Because you see, anything I need is in a place called Christ. Where I am. Hmm? Where I dwell. You understand that? So everything I require, absolutely everything, is in a place called Christ. And I am there. So the Bible said, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. That is the place from which I draw. Okay? So even if when I have a financial project, I don't rely on my financial account. I rely on the financial account of Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. That's how come I'm able to do a million project with a thousand in my hands because millions are flowing from an account that you can count what is in there. And God gave me something called faith with which I can plug into the flow and then there can be a flow from that account. Anyway, look at this. He said, absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life. See, I can live a dynamic life. And he says, and godliness through the true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Verse 4 quickly. For by this 
he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises for inexpressible value. These promises are of value you can't express. And he says, so that by them, look at this line, you may escape from the immoral freedom that is in the world because of this reputable desire. Look at the last line. And become sharers. See that? Sharers of the divine nature. Use the other amplified for this. I just want to pick this last line. And become sharers, partakers. Okay? Partakers of the divine nature. You know what this man is saying? Is exactly what you are saying in John 15. Because in John 15, he said, I am the vine. Not vines. Singular. He said, It's just one vine, many branches. Do you understand now? It's just one vine, many branches. And you see, that means the same life flows to every branch. Okay? And that we say, you must remain united to me so that you can produce. Okay? So it's the same vine. The life that is flowing in Jesus is also flowing in me. Okay? It's the same life. Now, he said over, go, go back to that scripture again. Okay? He said, now you might become sharers, partakers of the divine nature. You know what I'm talking about here? I'm talking about how that the life that you now have has brought you in the fellowship of God. Okay, 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 okay. Use Isaiah, no, pardon me, Psalm 82. Okay, Psalm 82. Let me show something there. We, are, we, have, we have already noticed that eh? And the part that says you are God. Alright? That one we know. Where it says, I said you are God. Since you judge on my behalf. Alright? So these are God's who are judges. Hello? Since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Go back to verse 1 of this ch chapter. God stands in the assembly of the representatives of God in the midst of magistrates and judges. He gives judgment as among the gods. <laughs> hey, you are not understanding what the man is talking about. In verse 6, he said you are gods. In verse 1, he said he stands among gods. He's not talking about these uh, worldly gods they are making. No, God is saying he judges among us. That's what he's saying. God has no business being among his other gods. Do you understand it now? He has no business being, there are no gods at all. You understand this? So when he says he stands among his gods, he's talking about us. That's why in verse 6 he said, now you will judge now as a judge. Put up verse 6 again so they will see it. Verse 6. You are God since you judge. Does it not reflect with verse 1? Yeah. Say, since you judge on my behalf as my representatives, indeed all of you are children of the Most High. So you see, God's children are gods. God's children are judges. Hallelujah. Okay? They carry both. They are judges. They are gods. Which is the reason why God first began with a first plan of planting the tree of good. Okay? Knowledge of good and evil. Because once you eat of that tree, you can judge. Do you understand now? But you see now, in the New Testament, God did something better. He gave us the mind of Christ. Do you understand? Right? He, he gave us the mind of Christ so that we can produce the judgment of Christ. We can produce the counsel of Christ. Do you understand it now? Yes. Because the last Adam obeyed. Hmm? He obeyed. Okay. He obeyed. Now you know eternal life is a reality in us. Let me show all these things to you. Okay. Glory to God. First John 5, look at verse 9. I just have a few scriptures, then we'll call it a night. Look at verse 9. First John 5, 9. If we receive hmm? the gift of eternal life now, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Alright? Because we are people that believe the news anchor more than they believe God's news. 
Huh? We are people that believe the daily nation yeah. more than they believe the chosen nation. Yeah. <laughs> are you hearing me? There are people that believe earthly news more than they believe heavenly news. Glory to God. Because we carry good news too. Alright? Yeah, so tonight you have a news anchor. Okay? Reading for you heavenly news. And this is the heavenly news that God has given you eternal life. That's the heavenly news. So if you believe the man reading for you news on the TV, you believe his witness, Bible said God's witness is greater. God's testimony is greater. So he says, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. Yeah. Look at verse 10 quickly. Father. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. Yes. You know, this word witness here is proof. Mm. It is the word evidence. Yeah. <laughs> so Bible said when you receive the Holy Spirit, you become a witness. Let me explain that. <laughs> when Bible said when you receive the Holy Spirit you become a witness, he's not just talking about how that you will start to witness for Jesus. That's part of it. He is also saying that he made you a proof. Hallelujah. Do you understand it now? You are evidence yeah. of his resurrection. Amen. Even before you can speak, the very fact that you are born again, you are an evidence package. So he said you are a letter of Christ. Read by me. Do you see it now? You are a witness. Okay. Look at First Corinthians 1. Let me put that for you so you will see it. So you see, even though Peter is a friend to witness for Jesus, his ascent sells him out. His look sells him out. Look at First Corinthians 1 verse 4. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. Verse 5. That you are enriched in everything mm -hmm. by him in all utterance and all knowledge. Look at verse 6. As the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Use the NLT. How about the Living Bible? Uh -huh. There's a version I'm looking for. Uh -huh. Look at this one. Let's stick with this one. It says, For the reality of Christ, of the truth of Christ, is seen among you and strengthened through your experience of him. Do you understand what the man is talking about? Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. Listen carefully. He said, The reality of the truth of Christ is seen among you. All right? Then he said, It is strengthened as you experience him. Okay, go to the King James now. I will explain this so you get it exactly. Even as the testimony, you know this testimony again? The proof, the evidence of Christ, of Christ was confirmed where? In you. Do you understand it now? He says, Christ's existence and resurrection has been confirmed in you. Do you understand it now? So, when I say Jesus is risen, it's a confirmed reality. <laughs> Do you understand? It's a confirmed reality in me. Okay? So, now Jesus is risen in my life. Okay? So, Bible said in Galatians 1, said God that, God that separated from my mother's womb, when he was pleased to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him. You see? He is revealed in us first. So that settles it that you're not just giving witness. You are the witness. Hallelujah. Okay? You are the witness. I don't just tell people that Jesus Christ heals. I'm healed. Yeah. I'm walking in health. Mm. Alright? I'm a first beneficiary of the things I claim. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you see them in us all the time. Mm. Okay? Thank you. He says the evidence of Christ has been clearly verified. Do you see it now? The evidence of Christ yeah. has been verified in your life. <laughs> Jesus has been certified in my life. The, Paul said this way. He said the, the credentials of an apostle have been seen in me. Do you understand this? So now I'm telling you the credentials of Christ likeness have been produced in me. 
You see that? This is the reason why we carry the name Christians. All right? So you look at me, you can see the evidence of Christ. Glory to God. You can see the evidence of Christ in our own lives. Glory to God. I, I like this. I like this. The evidence of Christ. Hmm? The evidence of Christ. The evidence of the power of Christ is verified in my life. <laughs> the evidence of the dominion of Christ is evidence in my life. How about the evidence of the riches of Christ? <laughs> <laughs> my life is an evidence that Jesus is too rich do you understand the evidence of his riches is verified in your lives glory to God <laughs> this is a full meal I'm telling you glory to God glory to God oh yes evidence hmm? full proof Oh God. I want to continue eating that meal for a minute, my God. Just amazing. Now look at this line. First John five, who at verse ten. Oh hallelujah. First John five. We say now he who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Okay? And because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son, that's where you make him a lie. Look at verse 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. You see, we say that, that God's testimony is greater. Okay? It's greater. I says if you don't believe it, you make him a liar. So what is the testimony of God? The testimony of God is that he has given us life. If you say otherwise, you are making him a liar. <laughs> Glory to God. I like this. Uh, tonight I'm talking like Jesus. He that gives me witness, that bears witness to my words is a father. I don't bear witness of myself. Okay? He, you know, this, this teaching has a second voice. A confirming voice. Okay, and that's the father's. He says, I have given you eternal life. You say otherwise, you're trying to make him a liar. Glory to God. That God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Look at verse 12. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Is that clear? Yeah. You either have it or you don't have it. Okay? Go back to verse 11. Use the Amplified Bible. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. And the testimony is this. God has given us eternal life. We already possess it. My God. I already possess it. It's a life that Hebrews told us is a life, the indestructible life. The incorruptible life. The resurrection life. You understand this? <laughs> this is a kind of life that is not by the blood. It's a life of the spirit. You see? So anything that attacks the blood shouldn't kill you. You are not sustained by the blood. You are sustained by the spirit of life at work in you. Okay, okay, okay. Look at Romans 8. Romans 8. Let me show this to you. Uh, so, so you will see where you draw your life from. <laughs> it's also the reason why he said when you drink any deadly thing. You know what is a deadly thing? It's a thing that is supposed to deliver death. Hmm? It, it's a container carrying death. So he says, deadly thing. Anything intended to kill, when it gets to you, it won't affect you. <laughs> oh, God. Do you have it? Romans 8, verse 11 or 10 there. Ah. Let's go to verse 10. Okay. If Christ is in you. Hmm? If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. <laughs> okay. Let me explain King James language. You know what the man is saying? He, <laughs> what he is saying is, he is saying you don't have two natures. 
<laughs> Do you understand it? That's what the man is saying. He is saying you can't have Christ and have the sinful nature. <laughs> so he says if Christ is in you, sin is dead. <laughs> he said the sinful nature is gone. That, and he tells you why. He says because the spirit carries life. Hallelujah. That's why you can't have the sinful nature. He, he, what the man is telling you in simple terms is that when the life of God came, it ejected out the human life. Yeah. Or like Pastor Chris says, supplanted it. That is telling you. It ejected it out. So you can't have the two natures now. Do you understand it now? So there are not two natures. So he says, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life. Because the spirit is life. Because of righteousness and nature. That's the nature. Okay? Yes. So I carry the life of God. Okay? That's the nature I carry. The life of God. And because of that, see, the body is there. Look at verse 11 quickly. I have a few minutes here. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him... Who raised Jesus. Hold on a minute now. Now he begins to talk to us. Because verse 10 he talked about. The nature in our spirit. Are you following? He talks to us about the nature in our spirit. Look at verse 11. He says. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ. From the dead dwell in you. He that raised Christ from the dead. Will also. Will also, that word also is important because it's showing you that life begins to move from the spirit now to impact on the body. Hallelujah. That's why he said also. So he said, because the spirit is life and you have the spirit of life <laughs> and you have the life giver, he said that life should begin to affect your physical body. So he says now, he says, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your motto. You know what is motto? Death doomed bodies. Okay? Yes. Death doomed bodies. Use the amplified, you'll see where he has motto. I don't know whether amplified added it. Okay? Okay, use the other amplified. Let me see. Uh -huh. He said it. He said, He who raised Christ from the dead will also restore to life your motto, short lived, perishable bodies. Through his spirit who dwells in you. You see? This is the vitalization of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. I call it vitalization. Over in Romans he said, put to death the deeds of the body by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit does not only vitalize with life, he kills the fleshy deeds. <laughs> you see, when a man is in fellowship with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> the fleshy did, sinful did die, and the body is vitalized with life. You understand that? Exactly what happened on that grave begins to happen to your body. Okay? Because when Jesus resurrected, he came back with another body. The body was injected with life too. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now he says. Okay, he says, mortal body, he will give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who dwells in you. There's a line I want to bring home. Go again to verse 10, 1 John 5. Is it verse 11? Yes, verse 11. Okay. Please look up for a minute. The testimony is this God has given us eternal life, we already possess life. Then he says, and this life is in his son. Okay? That life results in our spiritual completeness. Okay? And then he says, our eternal companionship with him is the last line I want to explain. You see where he says companionship? It's also the word fellowship. It's also the word oneness. Okay? It is the oneness of life. Yeah. Okay. Collins, put up John 10.30. Use the, mess, uh, the Amplified Bible. John 10.30. My God, I have to show this to you. Oh, hallelujah. Eternal life is in me. The life of God works in me. Okay? The Amplified Bible I called Amplified Bible. 
I and my father are one. See how we are one? In what? Wonderful. You see? So he lets you know where the oneness, what the oneness is referring to. The oneness of nature, which I'm calling oneness of life. Okay? The oneness of nature and essence. Okay? In essence, who he is is who we are. <laughs> Yeah, can I say that again? In essence, who Jesus is, is who we are. Hmm? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Go to First John again. Let me show something about that name. Uh, okay, verse 13. Verse 13. Look at who Jesus is. Look up. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Look at this. That name represents all that Jesus is and does. And that name has been given to you. Hallelujah. Do you understand something? That Jesus is the head. We are the body. We all go by the same name. Yes. Your head is not Abishai and your body Ab mm. as one. Mm. No. Abishai is a full person. Yes. Mm? Mm. So when you just call Jesus Christ, mm? yes, is a full body, which is why <laughs> every part of this body of Jesus Christ can express him to full magnitude. Mm. Do you understand it now? Hallelujah. To the full measure. Mm. That's what we read in Ephesians 5. That the, this ministry gives are supposed to bring each one of us to the full stature that is in Christ. Which means in the body parts, the heart grows to exactly the stature of the head. Hmm? And in verse 13, he said that you be no more. There is a place where you come to no more children. No more children. Okay? Now you begin to express the full stature of who Jesus Christ is. But there's a line I must show you before I can pray for you. Uh -huh. Can we go back to verse 12? Same chapter. He who has the son has the life. That is eternal life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Is that clear? Now, Look at John 20, verse 31. Use the New King James, please. Oh, hallelujah. Tonight, I want to explain something. Okay? That uh, when you believe in Jesus Christ, and say, I'm born again. Most of God's children don't, just know, don't know they are not just born again. The fact that you say, I'm born again, it means you received something. You believe in Jesus to have. You understand? There is a level above believing where you become a haver. You understand? You become a possessor. You understand? So we believe to. It, it's common. It's in John 3 16. You see it there. Say, so that he that believes should not perish but have. You see? You move to have it. It's also the goal of soul winning. All right? It's not just people coming answering the call. It's so that the Lord can fulfill the same purpose he began for them to receive life. Look at John 20, that one. I like John for this one. He said, but these things are written. Start from verse 20, 30, so you will see what the man is talking about. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Verse 31, he said, and but these signs are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And once you believe, watch, and that believing you may have. You see the God? Once you believe, you should have life. See? Use the message Bible. These are written down so you will believe that Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ, the Son of God. And in the act of believing, have real eternal life in the way that Jesus personally had it. 
my god do i like it hey have eternal life the way he had it hey this is good this is good abishai mm. i have life the way jesus had it I feel like shouting in this place. I have eternal life the way Jesus had it. Eh? Let me say that again. See, the Son of God, and in the act of believing, have real eternal life in the way that Jesus personally revealed it. Hmm? I have it how he revealed it. <laughs> My God! This is amazing. How God revealed, how Jesus revealed life is how I have it. Amen. How, how did he reveal it? He revealed it as life above sickness. That's how I have it. Hmm? That's how I have it. Exactly. And you know something? This revelation comes from the life himself. Do you understand? In other words, the revelation of life in Jesus is what I have as my possession. My God, are you hearing me? The revelation of his life is what I have as my possession. Hmm? Let me read it again for you. Say, these are written down so that you will believe that Jesus, we believe up to there, right? And the, the Son of God, and in that act of believing, you will have real and eternal life in the way Jesus personally. He revealed it in his person. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Can I read for you an interesting scripture? Use the King James Bible and read for me First John 2 uh, verse 4 there. 4 or 5. I'll tell you which one is it. Just put it up so you see. Look, look at verse 5. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Verse 6. Uh -huh. He who says he abides in Christ. If you say that you are living in Christ. <laughs> Glory to God. If you claim that you're living in Christ, if you claim that Christ dwells in you, he said, therefore, you ought, ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Hmm? He says, if Christ lives in you and you claim you abide in him, he said, you should live exactly how he lived. Do you understand it now? Mm -hmm. Now, how did Christ personally reveal that life. I want to close with that. Can I? First John 1. How did he personally reveal it? First John 1. That which was from the beginning. Hmm? Which we have had which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon. You see, there's a place where you see <laughs> with your eyes and that is looking upon. <laughs> Glory to God. It's where you begin to unravel, unwrap. You understand? Okay. I like, uh, now I'm reminded of a scripture by Paul where he said that Christ might be magnified in my body mm. by death or life. Mm. See, life magnifies him too. Mm. Okay. Okay. Which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, mm. our hearts have heard out. <laughs> our hearts have heard out concerning the word of life. The man is not done. Look at verse 2. I like this. Look at verse 2. The life was manifested. Oh, the life was revealed. Yeah, we just said you have it the way it was revealed. It is this John that told us. So he said that life was manifested and we have seen and we bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. I like it. John is letting us know the life that has always been with the Father took on flesh. 
Okay? He said that light that the father always had that made him who he is came to us in human form. Do you understand it now? Mm-hmm. He said it was manifested to us. Look at verse 3. I like John for this one. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship. <laughs> may have oneness. We talked about the oneness of life. May have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son Jesus Christ. Use the Amplified Bible for this one. So you will see this. Okay, he said this. He said, with, with that, what we have seen and heard, we also proclaim to you, so that you too may have fellowship as partners with us. And indeed, our fellowship, which is a distinguishing mark of a born again believer. My God. This fellowship is what distinguishes you from sinners. You are fellowship with, with God. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about how you have been included in the Godhead. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about how you've been made a partner. Do you understand? In the Godhead, you have become part of that Godhead. Now you can express God. Do you understand this now? Woo, I like this. He said you become partners with us. And indeed, our fellowship, oh God. Woo, I'm in fellowship with the Godhead. In fellowship. I'm in fellowship with the Godhead. Oh yes. Someone will be listening to this clip and will say, Pastor is preaching heresy. Look at Colossians 2.9. Let me settle that once and for all. Colossians 2 9. Makebo Raha Seferas. Oh God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you know what Jesus did? Jesus came to die for us sinners. After his resurrection, he, he dignified us, he lifted us from the place of just mere human beings to fellowship with God such as where he is seated hmm? ok I wish I can see that scripture go to John 17 John 17 and verse 21 22 there <clears throat> he is praying that this one this one may be where I am <laughs> <laughs> I want you that fellowship. Twenty-one. Four. Four. Okay. Mm-hmm. John, not Luke. John seventeen. Thank you. Father, look at the, the prayer of Jesus. Eh? So you will see. Father, I desire that they also you give me may be with me where I am. My God, are you hearing what I'm reading this night? He said, I'm praying that those you give me may be with me where I am. Christianity is not just God coming to where you are. It's God lifting you to where he is. Do you understand this? Is God lifting you to where he is? What a prayer. My desire is that those whom you gave me may be with me where I am. Where is Jesus? <laughs> My God. Woo, glory. That they may be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory. You see, because when you are where he is, you will behold it. And this beholding is experiencing. Use the Passion Bible. Mm, what a prayer. What a prayer. Father, I ask that you allow everyone you have given me to me to be with me where I am. Then they will see my full glory. See, until you're with him where he is, you can see it. And know what John told us? He told us when we see him, we'll be like him. Are you connecting? Because I see him, I reveal him. All right, that's how it is. So this is an amazing prayer you ought to pray for yourself. 
Glory to God. And you know something? This prayer has been fulfilled. Because he said, Father, I desire them to be with me where I am. And he answered it. If I were to show you the answer, it's in official. It's all over. <laughs> it's all over. But just to show you one of the answers, <laughs> just to show you one of the answers, look at Colossians 2.9 now. So I can show you that beautiful answer. <clears throat> Go to verse 8. So you will see who he's talking about. Okay? Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit, according to tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. See, the last word there is Christ, right? Look at verse 9. For in him, Christ, right? In Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Now, pay attention, eh? Okay. Listen and listen closely. He said, the fullness of God dwells in Christ in bodily form. Now, let's pick it this way. Let's say the fullness of Christ dwells in Christ. But how it dwells is in, in bodily form. So, I'll be correct to say the fullness of God dwells in the body of Christ. Hmm? Because it dwells in bodily form. So, when I say it dwells in the body of Christ... And then I'll go further and say, who is the body of Christ? Do you understand it now? Okay, let me show it to you. First, Ephesians 1. Put up the last verse so you will see it. The last verse there. <clears throat> We're talking about eternal life here, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. This is the life of God. He put all things under his feet. Gave him to be the head of all things to the church. Look at verse 23 now. The church which is his body. Okay? And since that church is the fullness of him. You see? The body, just like what I told you in Colossians, we are the fullness of it. Now. Okay? Now let's finish with Colossians now 2 9, where we were, the Amplified Bible. For in him Christ dwells all. The fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. Alright? Now you see the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. You see the Holy Spirit receives from Christ and gives to us. See the Holy Spirit is another comforter exactly of the same kind. The Holy Spirit answers the name Jesus. The Holy Spirit brought all of his fullness in us. Once you receive the fullness of the Spirit all of God is in you. Do you understand it now? Okay, use the Amplified for this one. For in him, the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression. See? Complete expression of the divine nature. That's eternal life. So, how is the divine nature of God expressed through his body? Do you understand? And we are the body. So, he continues to give expression to who God is. Look at verse 10, just in case you didn't get that. Verse 10 will strengthen it. And you, see, are in him. You, you in him are made full. Having come to the fullness of what? Of life. Hallelujah. You have come to the fullness of life. In Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead. My God, I am filled with the Godhead. Wow. I am filled with the Godhead. All of God. All of him. I am filled with it. You understand that? Just make this your meditation and meditate on it. That all of God, me too, I'm filled with it. 
all of God. I'm full of God. Full of God. I'm full of Jesus. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. By the time this revelation hits you, cancer will dry. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All of this fullness. You too are filled with God. And he explains the Godhead. He says the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Imagine the Father combined all this and dropped the fullness in you. Hmm? Now you see why the new creation is a special breed. And then he said, and rich full spiritual stature, he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. You see, that's how power flows. Okay, that's how anointing flows from the head all the way to the body. Glory to God. So we are filled with the same fullness. Glory to God. Okay, let's call it a night with John 5, 24. John 5.24 Okay, let's use the NIV. Oh, I carry the fullness of life. The fullness of life. I give expression of the divine nature. <laughs> I have eternal life as Jesus personally revealed it. <laughs> My God, <laughs> the evidence of Christ is verified in my life. Hey, hey, these are things you meditate on, you'll be flying. My God, the evidence of Christ is verified in my life. <laughs> and now I'm giving you the final point. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes in me who sent me has eternal life and will not be, co be condemned. He has crossed over. <laughs> you have crossed over from death to life. Glory to God. Use the passion. You will see this part of crossing over. <laughs> I speak to you an eternal truth. If you embrace my message, and believe I'm the one that sent in the one that sent me, you will never face condemnation. For in me, you have already passed from the realm of death into the realm of life. Glory to God. Now you see, I have crossed over. I mean, the realm of life, the realm of eternal life. Glory to God. The realm of if God could look at Moses and say, Hey, Moses, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Hmm? I made your God to Pharaoh, and Aaron is your prophet. <laughs> Think about it. Aaron is your prophet because he speaks for you. Hmm? And Jesus came in the New Testament, John 8. He said, I am my father. John 10. He said, I am my father. I want. They picked up stones. He said, Why do you guys want to stone me? What good work? What bad thing am I done? And they, 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 they said to me, They said, We want to stone you because you being man. You make yourself equal with God. Hmm? To call him your father, he said, you make yourself equal with God. All right? Mm -hmm. That's what it means. You, you are not less human of your earthly father. Do you understand this? Same. When it comes to the nature, it is the same. You share equality in nature with God Almighty. You better get it. Equality. Okay? So he says here, he said, for not only did he break the Sabbath, but he called himself my father. He called God my father, which made him equal to God. Alright? You see, you know, hmm. <clears throat> the message Bible, let's read the message. That really set them off. The Jews were now not only out to expose him, they were out to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own father. Putting himself on a level with God. And that's exactly what I call God. My father. This tells me I put myself in the same level with him. And Papa God is happy about it. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let's go over them again. I am with the fullness of God. I am filled with the fullness of God. You understand? The fullness of God. I have the eternal life just as personally the way Jesus revealed it. 
Okay? And the evidence of Christ is verified in my what? In my life. Father, I thank you for this wonderful time you've given us. Thank you for your word that has come to nourish our spirits. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us so expressly this night. Thank you for your word, Lord, that has nourished our spirit. Thank you for eternal life is our present possession. We give you praise for who you are. In Jesus' blessed name, we pray. Amen. Amen.